Hey guys, what's up? And today I'm going to show you how to resolve forces on slopes. And I'm going to start by giving you a step-by-step -step breakdown of our method in a general slopes problem. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to label all the forces on the diagram. So the obvious force is the weight, and that's just equal to the mass of our object times g, the gravitational constant. There also needs to be a force counteracting the weight because the object isn't falling into the slope. And that force is called the normal reaction force and it's perpendicular to the slope. If the slope is rough, then we also need to consider friction, which acts parallel to the slope and opposite to the direction of motion. Once we've drawn all the forces on the diagram, our next step is to separate the forces into components which are parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. The friction is already parallel to the slope and the normal reaction force is already perpendicular to the slope. So the only force that we need to fiddle with is the weight. Once we have our right angled triangle with its shorter sides perpendicular and parallel to the slope, then in order to separate weight into those components, we need one of its angles. So if we chase the angle theta, then what we end up with is that the angle between the line of action of weight and the dotted line perpendicular to the slope is also angle theta. Now using Sokotoa, we can split the weight into the components we need. So our final step is to use the equation F equals MA either parallel to the slope or perpendicular to the slope or both. But of course the exact equations you get are going to be highly dependent on the specifics of each question. So let's have a go at our first example. A force of 30 newtons acts horizontally on a particle of mass 5 kilograms that rests on a smooth slope that is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal as shown in the diagram. Find the acceleration of the particle. So we've got to start by drawing all the forces on the diagram. And we know the mass of our object is 5 kilograms and so its weight is 5g. And we have a normal reaction force denoted by the letter R. These are all the forces because the slope is smooth and so there's no friction. Step two is again to split the forces into components that are parallel and perpendicular to the slope. And of course the normal reaction force is already perpendicular. But for the other two forces we need a right angle triangle with sides perpendicular and parallel to the slope. You may have spotted the alternate angles that form the Z shape. And as we saw earlier, the angle between the line of action of weight and the dotted line perpendicular to the slope is also 30 degrees. A quick use of our calculator will tell us that 30 cosine 30 is greater than 5g sine 30. And so that tells us the acceleration of the particle is up the slope. And our final step is to use the equation F equals MA to determine the acceleration of the particle. In this case, we only need to use F equals MA going parallel to the slope. And so F is the resultant force, and that's equal to 30 cosine 30 going up the slope minus 5g sine 30 from the weight going down the slope. And that's equal to ma, and the mass is 5 kilograms, and the acceleration is what we're trying to work out. So dividing both sides by 5 is going to give us a is equal to 6 cosine 30 minus g sine 30, and that's equal to 0 
to three significant figures. Also, if you're getting value out of this video, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you never miss a thing. Moving on to the second example, a particle of mass 3 kilograms is moving on a rough slope that is inclined at 40 degrees to the horizontal. A force of 6 newtons acts vertically on the particle, which is moving at a constant velocity. Calculate the constant resistance due to friction. Step 1, label all the forces on the diagram. So we have a weight of 3 g in this example. We also have a normal reaction force acting perpendicularly to the slope. Since the slope is rough, we also need a friction force, but we'll delay putting that on the diagram for now because we don't know whether the particle is moving up the slope or down the slope. So now we should split the 6 newton force and the weight into components that are perpendicular and parallel to the slope. And as we've seen before, the angle between the line of action of the weight and the orange dotted line is equal to the incline of the slope, and the dotted triangle above it is a similar triangle which means that it also has an angle of 40 degrees. So we're now ready to think about which direction of friction is travelling in. So if we compare uh, forces parallel to the slope we'll see that 3 g sine 40 is greater than 6 sine 40. So without friction we have a resultant force going down the slope and therefore friction must be travelling up the slope to give a resultant force of 0 making the velocity constant. Now that we've got all the forces labelled on the diagram and split into their components we can go ahead and do the last step which is to use the equation F equals MA. Like in the first example we only need to consider F equals MA going parallel to the slope. So going down the slope we have a force of 3g sine 40. And opposing it we have a force of 6 sine 40. As well as the force of friction going up the slope. And that's equal to ma. We know the mass is 3 kilograms. And we also know the acceleration is zero because we have a constant velocity. So rearranging for friction is going to give us uh, friction equals 3g sine 40 minus 6 sine 40 and that's equal to 15.0 newtons to three significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments what video you want to see next. But for now, take care and I'll see you in the next video.